Measuring in chemistry is complicated by the size of atoms. Atoms are incredibly tiny. So counting them isn't as easy as just going up and, you know, picking one up and counting it. You need to actually look at many, many, many atoms to make it make something that you can actually hold or work with. So we use a, a different measurement for measuring the number of atoms, and it's called the mole. The mole is a uh, it's a very large number, so it's a it's a used to count the number of particles. It's kind of like a dozen, um, except that if a dozen instead of being twelve was a very large number. In this case, a mole of anything, whether we're talking about atoms, molecules, ions, whatever we are working with, is six point zero two times ten to the twenty third of that item. It's extremely important so that we have an idea of the relationship of measurements that we take to reality of how big a measurement is, how many atoms are we dealing with, how many particles are we dealing with. And it's extremely important in relation to the periodic table. We'll take a look at a little bit how that relates to the periodic table when we look at molar masses. This value of 6.82 times 10 to the 23rd is also known as Avogadro's number. Sometimes you will also see it as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Most of the time we're going to use the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd just because we're not working with values that have as many significant figures. So do keep in mind that Avogadro's number is a measured value. So you want to make sure that you're using an appropriate number of significant figures for that value when you're doing your calculations. So let's take a look at how we use Avogadro's number to convert between moles and particles. So first we're going to start with our relationship. So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So that particle could be atoms, molecules, anything really. You know, if there were that many cars, it could be cars, it could be, you know, eggs, it could be, it could be anything. Just like, you know, you can talk about a dozen of anything. So let's take a look at how many atoms of sodium are in 3.21 moles of sodium. So we identify we have the 3.21 moles. So that's our starting value. So that's going to be the number we're going to start with. And then we're going to do just a simple conversion. We have an equivalent. So see, there's an equal sign here. And we can create two different equivalences from this. We can have one mole for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or we can do the reverse of 6.02 atoms, right, times 10 to the 23rd of Na for every one mole of Na. Okay. Now, if we look, we're starting with moles. We want atoms. So we're going to have to use this version of our equivalents. So I'm going to take my 3.21 moles of sodium. You can put that over one if that helps you to line up your fractions. You multiply through and I get 1.93 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. Notice that I round for my significant figures based on the value I was given to begin with. This value has three significant figures. This value has to have three significant figures. Let's take a look at some additional practice. How many calcium sulfate molecules are in 5.21 moles of calcium sulfate? How many moles of gold would you have if there are 5.85 times 10 to the 25th atoms of gold? Both of these are going to be set up in a similar way. In the first one, you have 5.21 moles. of calcium sulfate. I can put that over 1 so I can line up my fraction. To convert it, I'm going to have to multiply it by, I have 6.022, or 6.02, get rid of that extra 2 because we're not using that, times 10 
to the 23rd. Molecules, because remember it could be any particle of calcium sulfate for every one mole of calcium sulfate. I just use MOL to, sub, to shorten into moles. So that's a, a you know, and then I would just go through and, and do the math on this. For the second one, it's a little bit different. We have 5.85 times 10 to the 25th atoms of gold. Place that over one, just like we do with all of our other conversions. So for every one mole of gold, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. So the main thing with these is to make sure that you're canceling out your units, just like you do with any other conversion.